I'm Alexandra DiGiacomo. I graduated from Duke in May. I received my Bachelor of Sciences in Biology, and I'm now working for the Duke Marine Robotics and Remote Sensing Lab as a research technician. The Marine Lab, kind of right in this really amazing salt marsh ecosystem, as sea levels change, as temperatures rise. We're very interested in how um, marshes and oysters and other components of these coastal ecosystems, how they're pairing. My sophomore year, I applied to a Bass Connections project, which is basically groups of undergrad, grad, postdoc, and faculty all working together in sort of a structured setting, doing research. They were asking for one undergraduate engineer. I was not an engineer, but I was really excited about using emerging technology to study the marine environment. In a lot of cases, the work that we do can be broken down into these sort of bite-sized chunks. And that's really awesome for students, so that we can you know, kind of deconstruct a larger problem and, and have students come and work with us, bring their ingenuity and their energy to solve these problems. But ultimately, they're part of a puzzle, right? A bigger system that we're trying to understand. This specific Fast Connections project was using drones and remote sensing to be able to rapidly and efficiently provide assessments of coastal environments. There's a big push currently to restore living shorelines, especially around here, because with increasing coastal development, a lot of living shorelines have been threatened. Common around here would be oyster reef, salt marsh. They provide habitat for crustaceans and fish, carbon sequestration, sediment stabilization to keep pace with sea level rise. So they have a lot of value ecologically. In recent years, we've suffered really, really great losses for a lot of these coastal habitats. The way that we study a lot of these coastal environments is by taking manual measurements. A limitation to that analysis is that you don't really get a sense of the entire marsh area. You're limited by manpower in that you can't take samples across the hundreds or thousands of kilometers. What drones allow us to do is to provide these rapid and really wide scale assessments and generate a continuous surface from that, which allows you to calculate things like biomass, plant height, and then track that over time. I had gotten really interested in looking at salt marshes specifically. I decided to apply for a student research award from Bass Connections to do another year-long extension of the project. My senior year, I trained as a remote pilot so that I could actually collect the data on my own. When you go into the marsh personally, there's potential destruction of habitat. There's trampling involved. Using drones, you can get into areas that you couldn't access for those manual measurements without causing potential harm to the ecosystem. The drones that we flew had both optical and multispectral sensors. Optical being the typical RGB color that we see in, and then multispectral being beyond the visible light spectrum. This multispectral and thermal imagery and hyperspectral imagery allows us to sample broader parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and allow us to um, detect things that, that you just can't see with your, with your eye. The difficulty with drones is that you're really capturing the tops of the plants. When you're taking all these images looking down at the marsh, you can construct a three-dimensional surface, but you have to figure out a way to get to the underlying ground to actually get plant measurements. So that's where multispectral data is helpful to us. Near-infrared basically shows if there is chlorophyll in the matter that you are observing in the imagery. You can see this area is actually vegetation and this area is ground. So then we can actually isolate the ground points and interpolate a surface from those ground points. You can see this kind of elevation difference. For a lot of this salt marsh research, we rely on structure from motion photogrammetry. Using drones, you take several hundred images across the marsh. You try to get a certain amount of overlap between images so that each point in the marsh, you can triangulate from multiple different photos at different spatial locations. And from that, you're able to put that into a software that's able to reconstruct a three-dimensional image from those 2D drone images. If I pick any point in the marsh here, you can see all the different cameras that have recognized that point. The work that I started in that first Bass Connections and then used the Bass Connections Student Research Award to further explore, I spent my senior year writing up. Then in July, I actually published that work in the Journal of Remote Sensing, showing the, this algorithm that I developed for taking in drone imagery and then basically outputting some continuous model of the vegetation was a methods paper, so one reason for the project happening in the first place 
was setting up this framework for if people want to monitor their marshes over time, but also the data that we've collected have this timestamp so that in the future, if people were to monitor these marshes, you could understand, is it receding? Is it thinning out? Is it growing? And now we have these data points from two summers ago, one summer ago, and now this summer to understand how that's changing throughout time. The Marine Robotics and Remote Sensing Lab and other technology-focused marine science labs are kind of pushing the boundaries of what we can collect data-wise and how quickly and extensively we can understand the marine environment. This is an aircraft that actually uses an antenna system to be able to track animals with tags on them. Uh, this aircraft will fly for about 80 minutes and it's very different in its structure. Its entire frame is all one single battery. It feels really new. People haven't done this type of research yet. So it's exciting in that I think we get the opportunity to explore a lot and just ask the question of like, what is possible?